this is our uh, basic outline for today. Uh, you can see my name down here at the bottom, Thomas Brickner. Uh, and I'm in the Department of Physics. Uh, the off then you'll see this opening slide every day. And uh, down here in the lower right uh, it is the office hours listing. It's also on the syllabus. Anyways, you'll see it in several different places. Um, so let's uh, start with introductions. By the way, I'm recording this um, session and uh, I'm going to take a seat now, put on my microphone. Um, uh, the, here's this, as I said, I'm a PhD astrophysicist and my field of study is uh, black holes and the early universe and the Big Bang Theory, so-called. Uh, I also study information theory, and that is actually related to black holes. Uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, all this stuff is uh, Stephen Hawking type uh, theories. Now, we're not going to talk a whole lot about any of that stuff this semester, although we will kind of edge around it when we talk about gravitation, Newton's law of universal gravitation and so forth. Uh, we will have an undergraduate teaching assistant, uh, and I just found out yesterday that the, the one I thought I was going to have is, is no longer available to TA, so uh, I'll announce that uh, when we get that set up, and uh, that uh, undergraduate teaching assistant will be a student that's taken this class and gotten an A, and uh, will definitely know how to help you study and, uh, and crush uh, all the uh, midterms and stuff. Now, we also have this semester supplemental instruction, SI, uh, from the mighty Sark department, and Kristen's here to, whoa, your phone almost fell over. Wait a minute, I have a question. Yeah. Um, are you coming to the 1030 lecture? I am. Okay. Uh, and I have another question. Can you tell the students, uh, raise your hand if this is your first semester at UCF. All right, so we've got a lot of first year students. Can you tell them a little bit about SARC in general? Sure. Um, so SARC is the Student Academic Resource Center. That's the acronym. Um, we offer all 
all things academic related. So we have supplemental instruction, um, which is what you all have. We actually have SI for over 50 classes right now. Um, so if you're seven in here, you go on to seven. If you see us again in your other classes, you'll get six in by the time you graduate, because then you can now teach all day long, every day for three weeks. Um, we offer help with that. We also have thought peer tutoring. So some of our classes also have more of a standard sit down, small group tutoring for your classes. Um, many STEM classes, but also statistics, accounting, so lots and lots of classes there. Um, we do start uh, workshops. So if you need help with like time management, procrastination, study skills, test prep, we offer a workshop schedule every semester. And we also have a new program called ACE Coaching. So you can sit down one-on-one -on -one with, with a peer. Uh, normally they're an upperclassman who can help you with study skills, getting your schedule together, completing how we're preparing for the term, resources. Um, all that good stuff. So no matter what you need as far as academics, whether you just want to do a workshop, if it's class specific, um, or if you just want to sit down with one person and speak to them and just try to figure out what you need help with, we're definitely there for you. And those are kind of our top four services. Um, we also have Sharp Online now, so we record a lot of our workshops. Um, and we also have a lot of like handouts and resources if you don't want to come in person. So we have all that good stuff online too. Great. Thank you. Uh, no, I don't believe so. And I just want to say that I even use stuff from SARC. Uh, some of their handouts in the past, they're excellent. So for those of you that are new here, I completely and totally recommend it. Thank you so much, Dr. Okay. All right, I'll see you in a few. See you in a few. Uh, okay, so that's the introductions. Uh, for those of you guys that came in late, I want you to sit a little bit forward. Ian, can you raise your hand again? Uh, forward of, the, of where Ian is, if you, if you don't mind. And, we'll, and as I said, uh, there's, a, there's a reason for that. And you're not in trouble or anything, so don't worry about that. Just, uh, the reason that, that I'm asking you to do that is because we're going to be using clickers and uh, the clickers sometimes do not work all the way back to the back of this lecture hall. And we didn't figure that out until uh, last spring. And so ever since then I've been, you know, I had a student way in the back uh, just clicking and you know, she, her clicker would click when she came up here to the front, you know, to test it out. And then when she was back there, it just wouldn't, you know. And so you don't want to be that in that situation. So. Um, and there's plenty of room, so you, you don't have to sit next to anybody if you want to, you know, spread out your stuff. Uh, so that's that. Uh, by the way, uh, my last name, Brickner, it's, it's one of these German names that's tough to pronounce, tough to spell. Um, and for that reason, my students traditionally um, refer to me as Dr. B. And, uh, you know, you may certainly do that. And I'll try to uh, learn all your guys' names. This is actually a fairly small section. There's about 130 students on the roster right now. And I should be able to learn everybody's name if you come to class every day. So I'll be practicing names. And Ian, you're the first one. Right. And I'll try to, uh, try to remember your guys' names. I, I like to do that. Okay, um, I want to talk about this thing that we do. This is a picture uh, of an observatory down in South America called the Paranal, Cerro Paranal um, Observatory. And it's one of the best ones uh, in our universe. And this class, that's a great image of what this class is about because Galileo said, you know, he, Galileo's like the dean of the college. Um, and he said that philosophy is written in this grand book, I mean the universe, which stands continually open to our gaze. And that is what he made his study. He is the dean of the eternal college, if you will, uh, of physical science. That is the class that we are in. 
And I'm one of, Sir Isaac Newton was one of his students. And I'm one of his students. And now you guys are in his school and you are students under Professor Galileo. He also said that this book, it's written in the language of mathematics and its characters are triangles, circles, and other geometric figures. And without which, um, it is humanly impossible to understand a single word of it. Without these, one is wandering about in a dark labyrinth. Now, what we're gonna be doing this semester is helping you um, learn to read the book the way Galileo started and the way that all scientists read the book, this grand book, the universe. And, you know, making a, a this is a temperature map, uh, a temperature anomaly map. The anomaly is over here. Uh, let's see if I can get my cursor. Uh, I don't have a big cursor today. Um, right over here, this deep purpley area. Uh, so that's New York State, Pennsylvania, uh, a little bit of New Jersey, a little bit of Vermont. Uh, and it's a weather map. And how scientists do that, using numbers, using observations, using the gray matter, that is what we are going to be doing. Now, you're, you're not going to be uh, professionals in science, but you're going to be conversant by the end of the semester. That is the objective here. And you'll understand a little bit about Galileo and Sir Isaac Newton and Michael Faraday and uh, Rosalind Franklin from the 20th century and, and, uh, and Stephen, a little bit of Stephen Hawking. So uh, that's kind of what we are about to start. Now, before we get to the syllabus, uh, does anybody have an eye clicker with them? One, two. Okay, let's do some clicking with two people. Now, you're not in trouble. We're just going to do a practice eye clicker item. So if you have it, turn it on. Hold it. Yeah. No. No, we're not using the Reef app. Uh, answer no. We're going to be clickers only. So, uh, and I'll talk about clickers in a few minutes. But if you have a clicker, let's click. Okay, hold the power button down. Uh, hold it until the square flashes and then type in frequency DD and you'll get a message that says go nitro. You see it? You see, did you see go nitro? Do it again. Try the power button. Hold it down until you get the flashing rectangle DD and you'll see a go nitro message. You see it? See it now? Yeah, hold the power button down until the, yeah, hold the power button down until it flashes. Then type DD. Okay, go Nitro. Did you got it? Okay. All right, for the rest of you guys without clickers, you're just going to have to you know, write this down in your notebook. Uh, it's just a practice question. Uh, type in your favorite superhero. And just so you know, I can see every answer. And, I don't know, and since there's only two people, I'll be able to tell exactly who's voting for. Ooh, I see. Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Justin Bieber. And... Uh, you know what, I'm glad nobody's here and voting for E. But of course, in my book, the correct, now this is just a practice question, and we're gonna be using clickers every day with scientific questions, not, you know, goofy superhero questions. In my opinion, this is the answer. Wolverine, the best and the mightiest of them all. Anyway, um, get your eye clicker, and if you, we're not going to be using the Reef system. That's the one where you can click from home on your, on your uh, smartphone. Uh, we're not going to be using that. So you got to get a, a, can you hold up your eye clickers? Up, it's, the, it's the white one. It has a display screen and a regular numeric uh, or a regular uh, set of keys and stuff. The key is the uh, display screen. There's littler ones floating around still. It's first generation. This is the, the one that we want to use. 
If you have a neighbor or a roommate or a friend that's not using their iClicker Tuesday and Thursday at 9 in the morning until 10.30, uh, you can use theirs and uh, you're going to register it uh, on iClick uh, in web courses only. There's a little link. Uh, just, oh, and all you got to do is, I think you type in your email address and then your serial number. That's the little number on the back of your rig. Uh, and then you're good. Okay. And then I'll be able to get your, your pointage and stuff. Come on down to the, towards the front, please. All right. So anyways, we're going to, I just want to get some eye clicking today. And uh, we'll do some more clicking uh, on the eye clicker uh, this week and next week, from here until Thanksgiving, until the final exam. All right, uh, let's talk about the syllabus. Um, can you come up and get some syllabuses? And can you come up and get some syllabuses? Here you go, just hand them out in piles. Okay, don't count them out, just, just hand out a few for each row. And if your row has more than enough, then, okay. Yeah, pass them back. I, I want you to go up the rows, but this is all right. This will work. That's all right. We're doing good. Split that, give some across the aisle. If you will. Okay, or get, get a little. Okay. And if you have some extras, send them towards the middle and send them towards the back. Send them uphill. And that and eventually everybody will get one. And hopefully we've got enough. And you guys handed them out. Don't forget to keep one for yourself. Come on down here towards the front. Everybody, Ian, hold up your hand. Ian, everybody's supposed to be in front of Ian or on his row or front. And you guys that are came in late, you're skating today. But All right, who doesn't have one? Raise your hand if you don't. Dude, uh, we need one right up here. Can, can you go? I don't know, man. Who doesn't have a, a syllabus? Okay. Okay, take one for yourself. Don't, okay. Thanks. Okay, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's just trot through the, uh, the basics here. Um, uh, and then we'll dismiss after this is over. Uh, the textbook, etc. Okay, oh, before we get to the textbook, um, in the top table there are basic specs. Uh, my phone number, 823-6286. Okay, draw a line through that because I can't get it to, I, I'm supposed to have a phone number uh, and Skype, but I can't get Skype to work. So, you know, just, I'm sad to say it's, it, it is not working. Email, uh, do not use conventional email, you know, blah, 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 dot UCF dot edu. Don't use that. And the reason for that is um, it is not compliant with the federal uh, privacy regulations that I have to follow. But web courses inbox messaging is. So we'll use that, it's perfectly fine. And I'm on web courses like 24 seven, all right? So if you send me something that's most likely, unless I'm asleep in the night, uh, I'll, I'll get it within a few minutes. Okay, T T A uh, is going to be T T B A to be announced. Office hours uh, for this class. Uh, our normal office hours are going to be 11 to 1 on Wednesdays, 
in room PS158. Now that's the, um, that's the sun room uh, in uh, the physical sciences building. And physical sciences is by the shuttle bus stop over by the counseling center and Libra community over there. Uh, and the number five and the number nine bus go there. And I think the, uh, the new uh, uh, st the shuttle, the black, black line shuttle, I think it's called now, uh, that goes by there now too. Uh, so that's uh, room 158, it's, it's right by the main uh, entrance. Okay, course description, that's from the, the uh, course catalog uh, verbatim. Uh, and also, this fulfills your GEP Science Foundation E1, which is good. Textbook, it's, a, it's going to be a website. The ISBN there uh, is uh, for the website, for the uh, license for, or the account, your account on the website. And just so, has anybody bought it over at the bookstore? Is it out? Okay, good. Uh, it's it's not ready yet. The uh, the link we're still trying to figure out, you know, the link and stuff. But I hardly come on down here towards the front. Is this your first year at UCF? Second. You started in the summer. Yeah, it's all right. Just you know, everybody knows you're a newbie now. Okay, it's all right. Uh, anyways, um, the bookstore is really expensive. And you're going to pay $35 more than the KendallHunt.com website. So keep that in mind. Now, I know some of you got to buy your stuff at the bookstore, you know. But um, uh, do not let the bookstore... They get more money than I get. And all my royalties go to UCF anyway. So it, I just, anyways, just, you, know, you know, figure out what you want to do with your money. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, learning outcomes. And I've kind of already talked about this. The student will improve the ability to think about physical processes. So that's concepts. You think with concepts. You work out concepts with calculations and math. Uh, you'll calculate important physical quantities reasonably. You know, you're not going to be doing rocket science. Actually, you will do a little rocket science. I'll show you how. Uh, you know that famous movie, uh, Hidden Figures, from a couple years ago? I really love that movie. And those guys are rocket scientists. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the stuff that they did um, in that movie and, and why you know, what's important. Um, additionally, the student will comprehend the rise of science in the West, beginning with Aristotle and Galileo. And I've already discussed Galileo's prime insight, you know, to make a comprehensible, intelligible description uh, of the universe. Final exam, oh my goodness, 7 a.m., December 6th a day that shall live in infamy. I am sincerely and permanently sorry that you will have to show up, because we're going to have it, and it's going to be at 7. There's no way around it. And I sincerely wish that someone would get a message to the president of UCF to permanently and completely ban 7 a.m. finals. It is, you know... It's inhuman. I just, you know, it should not, but it keeps happening. And you guys are going to have to deal with it. Uh, but just so you know, we're, we're going to be talking about exams here in a minute. The, the final exam actually is a little bit easier for pace than a midterm. Midterm is a 50-point test. You get about 60 minutes, sometimes a few more than that if we get going fast. Um, and so it's roughly almost one question per minute. The final exam is 100 points, 
and but 170 minutes, almost three hours. So come on down to the front somewhere. Uh, so, um, so uh, the time pressure is a little bit better uh, on the final uh, than on a midterm. Midterms, you should be all right. And final is, is even better. Okay, academic integrity. And this is pretty important. Uh, all general UCF policies apply, especially Golden Rule and the UCF Creed. The websites are there. And we recently uh, experienced significant breaches of academic integrity, and we had to fail a whole bunch of students. It didn't get into the papers. There's a whole lot of Zs on transcripts right about now. I think most of them are adjudicated. Uh, and, uh, you know, you don't want to be in that situation. Any cheating I detect on exams will be punishable by no less than a zero on the exam in question and lowering the semester grade and up to expulsion from UCF. And I'll add to that the Z designation on your transcript. That's the killer. You know, try to get a job with that on your transcript, you know, or get into grad school. Common, uh, okay, and, uh, the last paragraph there. Operating another student's eye clicker is also cheating, and we've detected that as well. All right, we have ways to do that. So if you're, if you're not in class, just, you know, you don't have to be in every class to get most of your points from iClicker. So don't tell your buddy to use your iClicker, okay? Because then your buddy and you are both going to get uh, punished. So we'll, be able to, we'll be able to detect it. Next sentence. Uh, homework assignments are essentially study tools. So studying and, and working on homework with a classmate is fine, acceptable. And you'll be doing the same thing in class. We'll do clicker questions, you know, like you're calculating a velocity or a density or something. And I'll, I'll encourage you to collaborate and, you know, kibitz with your uh, neighbor, whoever you're sitting next to. So if you see somebody in here that you know, sit with them. You know, two heads are better than one. Iron sharpens iron. And it definitely is, is one of the best study strategies uh, to have um, a study partner of some kind or even a study group, but not on exams. All right, so accommodations. All right, UCF is committed to providing reasonable accommodations uh, for all persons with disabilities. And I share that same commitment. Students with disabilities who need accommodations must be registered with Student Accessibility Services, SAS, which is over in Farrell Commons, room 185. The phone number is, is given there. And you have to do that before requesting accommodations from, from me. Students registered with SAS that need accommodations must initiate contact through SAS and Knights Access. No accommodations will be provided until the student has used SAS slash Knights Access to request accommodations. Um, and I've already got the testing contract set for uh, several students in this section. And I don't, I don't know who you are yet, but I, eventually I will. Uh, and several students in the uh, 1030 class. So uh, we're working on it. And, and uh, when it comes to midterms and the final, it, it'll work really smoothly. You'll like it. We have a good system. Okay, active duty military accommodations will be made as a matter of course as they become necessary. So if you've got a, a call up or something like that, which happens, uh, just let me know and we'll, we'll get you squared away. Emergency. Okay, emergency. Uh, yeah, the emergency exits are over here on the left side, of the, your left. Uh, and this is actually an emergency exit over here as well behind this door. There's all kinds of stuff back behind this door. Uh, so I'd go out that one or go out the back. There's nothing over here. Okay. Uh, so try to familiarize yourself with that. And, uh, and that'll be good. And hopefully we won't have any emergencies. Financial aid surveillance. Okay. Um, 
As of fall 2014, all faculty members are required to document student activity, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's for uh, verifying your presence. If you have uh, federal financial aid of some kind, uh, then they have to verify that you're actually participating. Now, the way that we're going to do that is uh, in web courses. Uh, it's homework zero. It's Chuck Norris question. Uh, and, and in case you're wondering, and if you don't make it to this or the Thursday exam and you're listening to this on YouTube, what they're really looking for is clicks in web courses. So you can actually uh, get take attendance or signify attendance by uh, posting something in discussion. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And anyways, we're just, it's a one question homework. And that's gonna be your homework for tonight. And it's due on Friday at midnight. Uh, so, uh, but we'll have some regular homework uh, on Thursday, due next Tuesday, some regular physics homework. All right, so you'll do that. Okay, so emergency, let's talk about grades. Okay, now we're on the second page. Uh, would you guys like to dismiss a little early today? I mean, if we get through the, the uh, syllabus stuff. Okay. Um, we used to have big demonstrations, but it's, it's, since we're not in the physics building, it's kind of hard to get them up here as often as we want. Grades. Okay, so the first table tells you the different ways that you earn points for your semester grade. You have three midterm exams, exam one, exam two, exam three, 50 points each. Now we'll take the best two out of those three if you're here for all three. And most of you will be here for all three. Okay, homework 25 points, uh, participation 25 points. Uh, final is 100. That's 40% of your uh, final grade. Total is 250 points. So uh, it's kind of good. That, you know, you might get, um, you know, take a face plant on a midterm. And that will probably be, I mean, if you have just one bad midterm and you've taken all three, then that'll be the one that we drop. But if you have more than one that you take a face plan on, take comfort in the fact that homework and participation together add up to one midterm. They're equivalent to one midterm, 50 points. And that is an easy pile of 25 points to get from homework. Because homework in web courses, um, you'll have four attempts. And sometimes I light up more than four attempts so you have a little extra practice. So you should, everybody in here, if you do your homework faithfully, do it with your, your roommate or, or, you know, somebody from the other class. Uh, you're probably going to get, you know, 25 out of 25 for homework, 24 out of 25. Uh, it, every semester is a huge number of students that get 25. Out of, so it's, it's really nice. And the same thing with clickers. You know, we're not going to do the official start of clickers until after Labor Day. So we're going to be practicing until then. But after Labor Day, when we start having official clicking participation, um, you're, most of you are going to come in with 25 out of 25. So there's going to be a lot of you with those two grades together. You know, you're going to have 50 out of 50 or 49 out of 50 or 48 out of 50. And that's a nice chunk of change. Now, you won't know what you have until the very end of the semester, until Thanksgiving or so, all right? Because we're always doing homework and we're always doing clickers until Thanksgiving or so, the end of the semester. Uh, but, you know, just come faithfully to class and participate and do your homework faithfully every time and, and max it out if you can. Uh, and you're going to be looking at a nice pile of points even if you have a little bit of stinkiness in your midterm grades, which happens, you know. But my job is to help everybody in here crush with impunity every midterm and the final. And the first exam 
You know, I could tell, especially you guys that are, it's your first semester here, uh, the newbies, you're going to be mighty nervous. You know, what, what, you know Dr. B's exam, you know, it's, you know and, and everybody's going to be a little nervous because you've never taken one of my exams. Uh, but after that, so a lot of people, they biff it on the, the first exam, and then they start crushing exam two and exam three. And then the final, they just, you know, take me to the cleaners. And I want that. If you all get A's, I'll give you all A's. You know, if I was grading on the curve, I'd only have, you know, like seven A's that I'm, I'm going to give out. And the people that are at 93% have to take a B? No, I'm not going to do that. All right. So if you earn it, you get it. All right. And my job is to help you, you know, break the curve. I, I never grade on the curve. Because I don't have to. My exams, you do pretty good. Okay, the, the grade scales, the next table down there, uh, A, B, C, D, and F. 90% uh, of 250 is 225. All right. So if by the end of the semester, combining homework, participation, two out of three midterms, and the final, you have 225 or more, ding, you have an A. All right. If you only clear 188, well, that's 75% of the points. All right. So you got a B. And 150 for a C, 125 for a D, passing, it's half the points. Below that, now, every semester, you know, this semester I've got about 400 something students in these two sections. All right. The big section comes after you guys. You're, this is the small section. And when I do the grades at the end of the semester, there's a very strong pattern. The strong pattern is the students that are here faithfully and do their homework um, faithfully and come to class faithfully and study a normal amount uh, for exams and stuff, uh, they're going to do okay. They're not going to be killed. They're going to, you know, they're, they're not going to flunk. The students that flunk, and, the, and usually the students that get a D, there's, there's two big gaps in their pointage, homework and or participation. And that tells me that they're not doing their homework, they're not paying attention. And if you're in, if you're in web courses, you know, frequently you'll see the homework assignments uh, available to you. So even if you don't come to class, but if you don't come to class, you're not getting participation points either. All right? So if you want to get a, a, a low grade, a D or an F, that's the way to do it. Skip class. You know, skip homework. Uh, but if you're, if you're doing a faithful uh, homework and faithful uh, attendance in class and participation um, and you, st you study a normal amount, you know, you might not take home an A, but you're not going to be taking home an F most likely. Right. And but but by the same token, those of you that are aiming for an A, it's they don't come easy. You're going to have to work your you know what off. All right. You're going to have to really think, especially if you want to get 100 percent on my exam. OK, in a homework, you can get 100 percent. Clicking, you can get 100 percent. But a midterm and the final getting 100 percent on that, getting 90 percent is is tough, but getting all the way up to 100% to ace it, you're going to have to really be on the money, okay? But students do it. Matter of fact, I had a, a student that I'll never forget. The student was just like a lot of you guys right out of high school, young, uh, young lady, um, and... Uh, she did a okay job on the first midterm. And then she started really putting the hammer down. And she just crushed the final. And so she ended up with the highest grade in the semester because we, we dropped the first midterm. And they kept her other good midterms, and she just annihilated the final. And I, she was so smart, and I kept trying to get her to be a physics major. 
But you know what she, her major was? Uh, early childhood ed. And I thought, my God, she's going to be the great. And you know what? I saw her. She teaches in a town near here, and I saw her at a gas station a couple of years ago. And she goes, Dr. B, how are you doing? And uh, I looked, and I said, oh, Simone. And, uh, and she's, she's teaching second grade. And I, her students, I bet her students really love her because she is so, and you know what else she did? She did that in the physical science class. And then she decided she liked it so much, she took the astronomy 2002, that's intro astronomy. And, and I happened to have her in that section the following semester, and she crushed that. I mean, she was just so awesome. And we couldn't get her to be a physics. I, you know, there's gonna, there is going to be somebody in here that I'm going to, lobby you to change majors to physics. Look to the left. Look to the right. Are you late for class or are you early for the other? Okay, come on down. All right. Anyways, you know how they say, look to the left, look to the right. One of you is not going to be here after, the, after Christmas. No, but if you look around, there's going to be somebody near you. I never know who it's going to be. But there's going to be somebody near you. It could be you. It could be, you're laughing, but it could be you. Somebody that's going to start, they're, 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 you come in and you say to yourself, Dr. B., I just, I'm no good at science. I just, you know, I've never been good at science. And you're going to find out, you know, boy, you're going to start really learning. Okay? Now, I never know who it is. Could be somebody up here in the front row. Or somebody all the way in the back. But there's going to be, and it's going to be several people. And, it's, and that's one of the things that I enjoy about teaching a lot, is seeing the students just lighten it up. That especially those that have never done it before. Now, there's occasionally an engineering. Any engineering majors in here? Okay, you guys better crush it. Okay, we get engineering majors in there because they've, they've had a lot of physics already. So I don't know. What, do, are, you, are you taking this for GEP or something? Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there, you, there's going to be engineering majors, and so they'll crush things, but... Uh, but it's the, the students that are like in English or journalism uh, or liberal studies. I think that's a major, isn't it? Um, and they're just, you know, I, but I never know who it is. It's always cool to see who it is. And uh, so that's going to that's gonna happen. Let's talk about class participation. In other words, eye clickers. Okay, register your eye clicker only through web courses. No class code is needed when registering through web courses. But you have to type in your serial number and I believe your uh, UCF email address too for extra safety. Come on down. Are you late for this class or are you early for the next class? And it's 1030, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so. Um, yeah, so register your iClicker takes like two seconds. But if you have a Mac, as I do, do not use Safari. Matter of fact, I don't do any web courses work hardly at all in Safari, unless I just go in and check messages or something. I found that Safari does not, for some reason, um, it doesn't handle images very well uh, from that, that are served up by Canvas. Uh, and there's, I don't know how to get it fixed. But uh, Google Chrome is good. And uh, what's the other one? Firefox. So, and the alternative is go to use one of the Windows boxes in the library or in one of the computer labs, you know, if you want to do that. If your iClicker is not registered through web courses, you'll not get any uh, participation points on your semester grade. Now, why is that? Well, this uh, device up here, right here, on the document cam, with a little, the, the iClickers are little cell phones, basically. They're, they're in the same frequency range as uh, cell phones, but their range is pretty limited. 
you know, even the back of the room sometimes. And this is a cell phone. This is like a tower, okay? And your cell phone, when you click the letter C for your answer, what it sends is your answer and your serial number, all right? Now, the two students that clicked today, uh, what is your name? Casey. Casey, and what is your name? Kwame. Kwame and Casey both clicked today, but, um, and what my computer up here has recorded is their serial number. Now, as soon as they register in web courses, um, the, uh, from inside web courses, you register your iClicker serial number, and then I, I download that roster from web courses, okay? So that kind of connects your, uh, your NID to your serial number, and then I know who's clicking. So right now, my computer doesn't know who's, who's who, okay? But when you guys register, and when the rest of you register and start clicking, then I'll be able to say, well, yeah, Ian uh, typed in the letter B, and uh, Casey typed in letter C, and Kwame typed in letter A. You know, and I'll be able to do that and grade accordingly. Okay, so, uh, but you, so you have to do it in web. Now, if you've registered or if you're using your iClicker for another class, your instructor might say use the iClicker.com website and you can do that but not with my class with my class you have to use iClicker if you don't do it you won't get points because I won't know who you are okay and every semester there's students that you know you know they're going to go until uh Columbus Day before they figure out dude I'm not getting any points yeah because you haven't registered okay and so just get it done all right and uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, for those of the, you that came in a little late, you can borrow a friend's iClicker 2. It's the iClicker 2 unit. Uh, Kwame and Casey, can you guys hold yours up again? Okay, it's the one that has the display screen on it. And go ahead and hold yours up. Not the box? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so is that, is that from the bookstore? Okay, so they have, okay, that's good then. The, the box from the bookstore looks like that, I guess. So if you buy a new one, oh, by the way, everybody in here, put some fresh Duracells or Energizers in there because the batteries that they come with are really cheap and they have a very notorious uh, reputation of flaking out in the middle of an exam. The last because we're going to use clickers on exams, okay? And you don't want it to f flick out on you in an exam. I mean, it's bad enough in class. But in exam, that's a, that's a disaster. So get the, you know, get some good batteries in there. Just for a, a word of warning. Okay. Okay, so do that registration. Now, the deadline for registration is September 4th. Okay, so that's the... Tuesday after Labor Day, and that's the fifth lecture. Now, uh, um, uh, Casey and Kwame, um, if you guys get your your units registered today, I'll synchronize rosters this afternoon, and you'll get a bonus point. Everybody that's registered before September fourth, so the first four lectures you'll get a bonus point for early iClicker registration. And that's my way of encouraging you to get it you know, done fast, 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 okay? So get your iClicker, get it registered, and then Thursday you'll have another bonus point, okay? And that's a good way to start the semester with a bonus point, okay? So we'll have four bonus points possible, and hopefully everybody in here gets at least one, and uh, that's good. And then we'll have homework and, you know, we'll have bonus point activities through the semester. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's usually how we start. That's traditionally what I do. Now, here's the important part. The next uh, paragraph, the leeway factor. Now, here's how this works. All right. 
It's class participation. So we consider it all right if you miss a lecture or two, and we're trying to be understanding and saying that, okay, yeah, sometimes you have to have a dentist appointment or, you know, sometimes your roommate puts your clicker in his book bag or vice versa and um, so you don't have it or it's on vacation in your, your roommate's car or something like that from the weekend. Uh, so 85% participation is considered full. In other words, if we have 100 questions between now and December 1st or December, November uh, 29th, I guess, uh, if, that, if we have 100 questions and you answer 85 of them, right or wrong, just answer them, you'll get all 25 out of 25, right? If you answer more than 85, you get 85% of them, you'll get 25 out of 25, okay? So you start earning your points when you're at 85, your full points when you're at 85% or, or less. Now, if you're below 85% and we'll, we'll uh, apportion the pointage, you know, so you might have 24 or, you know, 19 or something out of 25. Uh, and we do that proportionally below the 85% level. And I'll show you an example of that in a few weeks, how we actually do that, if we've got some, some actual sessions on the books, all right? So um, what this means in practical terms is that you usually have one or two lectures to burn, right? And, you know, in other words, you're absent for two lectures or your clicker is not working for two lectures, you're here, but it's not working, you know, or whatever combination it is, usually one or two lectures, and you can still get 100% by answering every other, you know, participating in all the other lectures, okay? So, you know, that's, you know, it's the 85% leeway factor, all right? Uh, so let me pause for questions about that. Or questions about anything, really. Okay, let's continue. Homework. All right, homework's pretty easy. You'll be getting homework scores, and there sometimes you have a four-point homework. Sometimes you have 11 points, sometimes 23 points. You know, it just varies, depends on, you know, what I feel like assigning you for homework, okay? But at the end of the semester, or at any point in the semester, you'll know what your total is, what you've done versus the maximum possible. So, like, if we have four assignments, and one of them's a four-pointer, and there's two ten-pointers, and one of them is a three-pointer, that's 27 points, right? So if you have um, 20 out of 27, then that's your percentage, you know, 20 divided by 27. And then you just multiply that by 25, and that's how many points you have for homework, okay? So it's, it's a little bit easier than the clicking. You know, the 85% leeway factor makes the clicking a little bit trickier. But homework is just straight percentage. Okay, so now I want you to make a note in your notes um, it's not in the syllabus, but it's, it's my tradition. And that is that if you, um, if you're clicking pointage or your homework pointage comes out to uh, like 20.001 or 19.133 or... You know, so I'll round that up. So 20.001, you know, a math, in the math department, they would round that off to 20. But in, in these two areas, I'll always round it up. So if you have 20.001, that goes up to a 21. 
And the reason I do that is so we have a whole number of points. Okay? And so I'm giving you the benefit of a one point, you know. Now, if you're 20.909, you're still going to get 21. All right? So the people that are, you know, and you, you can't predict where it's going to be. You know, so, but numerically, I'll always, you know, round up. And that's on homework and, and also on clicking. And in, in a few weeks, I'll do a full grade example with you. And I'll, sh and I'll deliberately do a couple that where you get 23.102, um, and then we'll round it up and stuff like that. And you'll see exactly how it works. Question? Wait a minute, your first name? Uh, Colin. Colin. And, Khalid, okay. Khalid, Ian, Casey, Kwame. Khalid, so question. That's correct. Rounding up only uh, pertains to homework and participation because uh, exams, for instance, that's the only other kind of pointage we have is exams, basically. Okay, exams are scantrons, you know, these, you know, these raspberry colored ones from UCF. Uh, and either you got it or you don't. And then we'll be using eye clickers on exams as well. And the, the benefit of an eye clicker on an exam is we can, um, you can type in a number or even a few letters, you know, like, well, you can't type in a sonnet or even a haiku, but I mean, you could type in you know, a phrase, you know, because it, it's like a cell phone. You know, it's like one of those stinky cell phones where you have to type the letter three twice to get the letter E or whatever it is. You know, so um, that's how these things work when, we, when we're taking exams. So, and so the, the benefit is if you type in a number, you know, like if the answer is 2.35 and you type in 235, then I'll say... Ooh, ooh, that student forgot the decimal point, or they thought they had it, but they didn't. And I'll be able to give them partial credit because the clicker questions that involve a calculation or a word, some kind of a set of symbols, are usually two or three points or even four points on the test. And so that means I could give you three out of four points. You know, if you bloop up the decimal point or something like that, yeah. I can give you three points for that. You don't get four because you, you, you messed up the, the decimal point. But anyways, so those are the other sources of points, and those are whole numbers. And that's why I do it with homework and clicking because, you know, that, that generates the way that we do it is fractions of homework, fractions of points. By the way, the grade book, I'm not sure if I did this already. We don't have any grades yet. But I always turn off, as much as I can, the grading of, that's generated automatically by web courses. Because web courses grading does, is not smart enough for our grading scheme. You know, like the 85% leeway factor, it doesn't know jack about that. And you can't program it. I mean, other systems, you know, the old Blackboard system, we could do that, but you can't do it with Canvas. So I turn off all those grades, and, and, the, and the reason is, in, in some of the earlier semesters when we had web courses Canvas, the students were looking at those percentages down at the bottom of the, of the grades, your guys' grades page. You know, you, you have rows of, of numbers for each assignment and stuff. Uh, and, they, and then at the bottom, Canvas generates percentages. And there were students like with 1,400% and 11,000%. And I'm like, no. That, you know. And in those days, there was no way to turn it off. So I just had to tell everybody to ignore it. But now you can turn it off uh, almost all the way off. You st I think there's still a few ways it sneaks through. But uh, so when you're, you know, just remember that I told you, no, we never turn that stuff on. Because it's, it's too confusing to see, you know, 1,400% for the grade. You know, that'd be nice, you know. But uh, so other questions about 
homework and stuff. Okay, let's talk about the schedule of exams. Okay, this is the top of the second column. Um, and this is a contract now. You've got it. Those of you that came late, we've got some syllabuses up here. You can grab one on your way out. Uh, exam one, Tuesday, September 18th. Uh, Exam two, Tuesday, October, oh, they're all Tuesdays, October 16th. Exam three, Tuesday, November 20th, except the final, that's on a Thursday. So, I, you know, they decide that. By the way, um, you might want to make a note. Exam one covers eight lectures. Exam one is our ninth lecture meeting, so the previous eight lectures. Exam two covers seven lectures. And then exam three covers nine lectures. Then the final covers everything, including the last two lectures. You know, we'll have two lectures after exam three and before the final, so kind of our, our uh, summary of the semester. And so that'll be on the final. Final is cumulative. All right, so now I don't want anybody to ask me, Dr. B, can I take exam two early? Dr. B, can I take it uh, on Wednesday? No, you can't. We don't have any makeups, we don't have any earlies, we don't have any lates. We only have this. So our exams are gonna start at 9 a.m. sharp, as, or as close as we can, to 9 a.m. sharp, and then you're gonna be dismissed at 10.20. And we got a class coming in right after us, so you gotta finish at 10.20. And you gotta be out of here by 10.20, because they're coming in to take an exam. All right, so that is the schedule. And we just simply, there's so many of these guys we just have to stick to a simple schedule, and that's going to be tough enough. Make sure your schedule is clear on Thursday, December 6th. That's our final exam day. Uh, and, and until about lunch or so, we go from 7 until 9.50. All right, so if you have a plane to catch, make sure, you know, it's not at 9.30 because you ain't going to make it. You're going to need, most of you are going to need almost all that time, if not all of it. Uh, so, you know, schedule those flights in the afternoon to be safe, all right? You know, same with cruises. And if you have a job off campus, you gotta be careful about that too, because I'm, I'm not gonna cut you any breaks about your job. You, you get your boss to cut a break with you, all right? This, I've got first priority on your time for a final exam week. So uh, you just tell them that Dr. Brickner's being a, you know what, all right? And, uh, and I'm not, because I don't budge, all right? You gotta make it. A matter of fact, I'll just add that to your regular exams too. Now you're here for lecture, so hopefully your work schedule is accommodating lecture. The midterms will be in lecture, you know, so if you're here today and you know, your exams are going to be at 9 in the morning on Tuesdays, um, just like your, your lectures. But the final is the one that's, that's slightly out of the pattern. But I want you to be very, very dedicated to being here for all three midterms and the final. I know you're all going to be here for the final because that's not, you know, you can't drop the final. That's not, you know, it's not, Dr. B, can I drop that for my... My low score? No, fine, everybody takes a five. The only thing that can be dropped is a midterm, all right? And I want you to just totally dedicate yourself. So if, if you're in the emergency room at the hospital on one of these exam dates, 
I want you to get your, your best friend to put you in a wheelchair and bring it, you know, bring it down the aisle. We'll get you squared away. Or if you, if you have to be lowered by ropes from a helicopter, you know, we'll, just, you know, we'll get you in there. We'll tear apart the roof and let you down. And get on, get on in here. Now, I'm kind of being facetious about that. I mean, if you're in the hospital, you can't go anywhere. But, but I want, you know, short of that, I want you in here. All right. Now, you newbie freshmen, you haven't done jack yet. You haven't been through finals week. You do not know about finals week until you have lived through it. Khalid, are you a, a newbie? There's a, I already re- asked for a show of hands. I know a bunch of you are. What you got to remember about finals week is it's enormous stress, and you're going to be tempted to study all night with your buddies and drinking monsters and getting the, you know, and then you get to the final and your, you know, your brain is fried already. C, maybe, F. You know, I, we had a guy when I was in college that he did that. He stayed up for like three days straight to study for like an econ final, economics. And they gave him a blue, you know, in, in those days we used these blue book things in those, you know, physics doesn't use it, but, you know, econ class. So he's writing essays, you know, some classes. I'm sure they still do that in English. Uh, so he had this blue book, right, for his, his and he was, you know, and he got in there, and you know, he's the, he was the son of a Supreme Court justice that I'm not going to name. And he, he stayed up for like three, you know, for whatever reason, he stayed up for three nights straight, you know, studying. And he, he, he thought he had everything wired, you know, he gets the, you know, and he gets the blue book and he reads, the, you know, they give you a little handout with the questions and you start writing your essays, you know, and, you know, and he just writes and writes, you know, three hours of writing. And he turns in his blue book and, and he, he leaves and he goes home and he crashes, right? So great exam, right? No, not, he got an F, he got like a zero because he forgot to turn the page. His blue book was one page of blue ink blurred all the way across each line. He wrote, oh, you know, 17 pages. He thought he was writing 17 pages, and he wrote one because he didn't sleep. He was so... Three sheets, to the, three, three, three sheets to the wind is kind compared to what that guy was going through. And that's a true story. So, don't, so you newbie freshmen, do not do it. All right, try not to do it. And you'll be happier. Uh, you got to get sleep. Sleep is your is a weapon. Think of it that way. You know, for finals week, your finals week experience is to defeat nefarious Doctor B's final exam and crush it like a bug. But you can't do that if you don't sleep the night before, and that applies to your other exams as well. All right, so you newbie freshmen, keep that in mind. All right, so mandatory exam attendance. Let's talk about this, and, and we'll almost be ready to dismiss. At UCF Academics comes first. Attendance at exams is mandatory, as I just mentioned. University excused absences are only four, and here's a, a short list, religious observances. So that's like uh, uh, Yom Kippur uh, in the fall. Uh, intercollegiate activities and athletics, military call-ups, and university-verified family or medical emergency. So that's like uh, last fall we had Hurricane Irma. You remember that? We, like almost two weeks, you know, 10 days. It was bodacious. It's kind of nice, but, I mean, it's, you know, you get a hurricane. It's, I didn't like it too much. Uh, so, so that's what it means by university verified family and medical and or medical emergency weddings, plane tickets from Priceline that your parents got for you. No way, Jose. Those are not legitimate excuses. All right. I had a student, you know, like my first year here, uh, class like this, and a little bit smaller, about 80 students. 
And she's a good student, you know, and she came up to me like t- two weeks before the final. Dr. B, can I take the final early? Because I have a job. And I said, oh, no. But, you know, it's a, it's a really great job, Dr. B. I, I have a job as a hula dancer in Hawaii. So I said, all right, well, let me talk to my BOS. So I went to talk to my, my boss, my BOSS, Professor Llewellyn, who's now passed away, you know, rest in peace. And he said, no way, she's got to take that exam. You know, I can't remember if she did or not, but it was, it was, a, it was a funny story, a hula, you know, a hula dancer. I guess they get paid good money, but not that, not that year. So anyways, uh, so make sure you don't mess up. Next paragraph, it's physics department policy that making up missed exams will only be permitted, as I said, for university excused absences. Authentic justifying documentation must be provided in every case and in advance for university sanctioned activities. Okay, now what that means is if you're on a team or a club and you have a verified outing, your advisor or your coach will give you something called the program verification form. Okay, those of you that are on teams, you've probably done it a few times already, right? And it's a, it, it shows the travel schedule for your, your outing, et cetera, et cetera, and your name's on the roster. And then that'll, that'll be your documentation. At the discretion of the instructor, the makeup may take any reasonable, appropriate, and appropriate form, including but not limited to a replacement exam, replacing the missed work with the same score as the later exam, or allowing a dropped exam. Circle that last clause, allowing a dropped exam. That is what we are doing. Other classes use some of those other things. What we do is allow a dropped exam, all right? Now, I want to um, share an, another a- admonition in the way of, by way of being a story, and that is a number of years ago, maybe four or five years ago, I had a student, uh, spring semester, that tried to take uh, the final early, tried to justify that or, or be absent for the final, I think, because her grandmother died or her mother died. And um, she, so I said, all right, well, you know, and, and God, I hope nobody in here that happens to, but, you know, stuff happens. And, and what it does, we try to get some kind of a funeral notice or some kind of documentation, all right, and that's normal. And so I explained to the student, well, we have to document it. And uh, so, so uh, now normally what we look for is the obituary in the newspaper or some kind of a death notice um, or the, uh, you know, a coroner's report or something like that uh, for a death. And then that's considered verified. And so what the student did was she gave me this, well, Dr. B, here's the invitation to the funeral. And she gave me this card and, you know, and, and, you know, this, and it was for a date, you know, several days before that. And, uh, or I can't remember the date. Maybe it was to, a date to come. And so she sent me that. And I thought, wow, I've never seen an invitation to a funeral. Um, and it was, you know, on a nice card, you know, a white, white card with nice lettering. You know, the curvy, what do they call that? Cursive lettering. Um, and I thought, boy, you know, and I showed it to my TA. And she said, you know, that looks like a wedding invitation. So I said, hmm, I better check this. So I called the funeral home that was on this, you know, this invitation that was printed up. Her grandmother worked at the funeral home and was still alive. So I said, what, what, are you, what did you do with this? You know, she, well, I, you know, I, and we, you know, it flunked. You know, trying to do that, that's cheating. That's dishonest, right? So don't do that. We, if, if something like that happens, you know, we'll take care of it. You know, we'll get you squared away. But don't try to fake it like that one girl did. Just, we nabbed her. All right, exam procedures. This will be the last thing. 
Okay, number two pencil, good eraser, UCF Scantron. That's this one. It has the Pegasus logo on the front. Okay, it's got 50 dots on the front and then 50 on the back. Midterms will fill up the front, most of it. And final will fill up most of the front and most of the back. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, you may use a scientific calculator, but anything that's got a square root key is going gonna, is gonna to be sufficient. So if you have one from like seventh grade that, you know, just has a few keys, it's got a square root key, you're good. Um, you also have to be on time, all right? If you get here after the first person finishes, tough toenails, you can't take the, the, take the exam, all right? No cell phones are allowed, so no cell phone calculators, all right? And we get... We get, I bust guys for that sometimes too. Matt, but one time, you know, we, we saw a guy in the, I think it might have been, no, it was in a different lecture hall. And he was towards the back and he was using his cell phone during the test. And so we found out what was that. We observed it. And so I went back and sat next to him for the whole test. And he stopped using it. He didn't do very good, you know, because he was using his cell phone. He couldn't. He didn't come to class, I guess. Anyway, so so don't use a cell phone. If you don't have a if you don't have a calculator on a test, almost ready. Uh, then you could just do you know sixth grade long division on paper. You should be all right. Um, we're not dismissed yet. Hold on. Final exam is cumulative, mandatory, cannot be dropped. Make perfect attendance on the four exam dates, your absolute priority, and you'll be very happy. Especially the midterms, because um, if you have three to work with, then you get to drop the, the lowest one. But if you only have two, and one of them's low, I mean, you're stuck with it, all right? Now, most, over 80% of you will be here for all three, so... You know, and if you, if you miss one, you miss one. I mean, it's not like the end of the world, but it does make, put you in a little bit more of a bind grade-wise. All right, you're just, oh, uh, one more thing before you dismiss. Uh, homework zero is in web courses. I already mentioned it. Uh, it should be available right now. You're dismissed. I'll see you on Thursday. Two minutes early.